G'day guys, it's Stas from Stas Brewing with another video on behalf of Beer Co. Today we're talking about hot side hop additions and how to use them. So what are hops? Hops are the flowers or cones of a specific type of plant from the hemp family. Hops have been used in beer for a long time, since about 500 BC, but it started to become more popular around the 12th century. They added to the wort and beer to create bitterness, flavour and aroma. The bitterness, flavour and aroma is to counteract or to work with the sweetness of the malt in the beer. Hops also have antimicrobial properties and can help prevent spoilage, though this is no reason to skip or relax on your cleaning and sanitation techniques. If you've only ever brewed extract beers before, you probably may not be familiar with hops or maybe you've only used them in a limited capacity, maybe a hot steep or a dry hop. Now, we'll come back to a hot steep later in the video and maybe dry hopping is something for a separate video altogether. When hops are added to boiling wort, we extract bitterness, flavour and aroma compounds into the beer. The bitterness comes from the alpha acids, which, while not particularly bitter in their raw form, are isomerized or chemically rearranged via a vigorous boil to form different compounds. How much alpha acids are isomerized depends on the length of time which they're in contact with the boiling wort and boil vigor, as well as a number of other small factors which are probably beyond the scope of this video. When you purchase hops, you will often see the alpha acid specification shown as a percentage. This indicates the percentage by weight of alpha acids in the hop sample. Hops with higher alpha acid scores are more efficient at producing bitterness in beer. Thus, you need less of them to achieve the same bitterness level. But you should know that this does not then carry over to flavour and aroma uh, potency of the hop. There are four to five main hot side opportunities where brewers can add hops into their beer. First word hop, or FWH. Bittering, 60 to 90 minutes. Flavor additions, 30 to 15 minutes. Aroma, 15 minutes or less. And flame out, knockout, whirlpool, steeping, zero minutes. It's worth noting that these times are all times in the boil or time to go in the boil. Let's talk about these. The first word hops are added after the mash and sparge is complete, but before the wort is brought up to the boil. This allows the hops to steep in the wort as it comes to the boil. The exact process of what happens is not fully understood, but first word hops are said to give a rounder, smoother bitterness to the final beer, as well as creating a more complex flavour and aroma. Because of the extended contact time with the wort, there is also an approximately 10% increase in bitterness uh, that's extracted when compared to the bittering equivalent. Bittering hops are generally added at 60 minutes to go. Some recipes call for a 90 minute bittering addition. These additions are primarily for their bittering contributions and don't add much in the way of flavour and aroma. Flavour additions are generally added with 30 to 15 minutes to go, but more modern recipes are pushing these later in the boil. Flavour hops still do add bitterness to the final beer, which needs to be accounted for when calculating your total bitterness of your recipe. Aroma additions are added with less than 15 minutes to go. As with the flavour additions, aroma additions still add bitterness. Styles like New England IPAs will often get most or all of their bitterness from aroma additions as brewers are adding such large quantities of hops late in the boil to achieve maximum hop flavor and aroma. Flame out, knockout, whirlpool, steeping hops. These are all zero minutes. So this is when the hops are added after the heat source has been switched off. Technically, these terms are slightly different techniques However, at a home brew level, we can just think of them all as the same thing. Hops are added and allowed to steep for 20 minutes or so. This allows the hop flavors and aromas to be absorbed into the wort without the alpha acids isomerizing and creating too much bitterness. 
Usually the temperature for a hop stand is 90 to 98 degrees C. However, modern recipes of New England IPAs and IPAs call for chilling the wort to 85 degrees Celsius or below to minimize the isomerization of the alpha acid compounds, allowing for more flavor and aroma without adding too much bitterness. Here is a useful way of picturing different approaches to achieving a 30 IBU beer with different levels of hop aroma and flavor. This graphic comes from an excellent book, Mastering Homebrew by Randy Mosher. There'll be a link in the description below. Here you can see four different approaches to planting a 30 IBU beer with different hop schedules ranging from bittering edition only all the way to no bittering edition and only using your flavor and aroma or flame out hops. All the way to no bittering and only aroma flame out hops. Of course, each beer will be different depending on the quantities and combinations of hops that are used and may yield very different results. Which one is best? Well, that's part of the art of brewing. So that about wraps it up for this video on hot side hop additions. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below and we'll do our best to answer them. If you'd like to see a follow-up video on dry hopping techniques or maybe how to put these techniques together and create a hop schedule, you can let us know in the comments as well. Don't forget to like, and if you're not already subscribed, get subscribed so you can stay up to date with the latest videos coming out on the Beer Co. channel. This has been Stas from Stas Brewing on behalf of Beer Co. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.